Hey guys, it's Ron. This is Lab 19. Uh, we're going to discuss HDLC, PPP, PAP, and CHAP. So to get started, basically the setup for this is that you have two locations um, that you've uh, contracted out uh, a leased line in between your two locations. Okay, now you want to link your routers between the two locations over that leased line. So the way we're going to do it uh, in this case is we're going to use our serial links, right? And at first we're going to do HDLC. Okay, so a couple real quick things we need to talk about about HDLC is that it's going to be vendor specific. Okay, and the reason that it's vendor specific is because uh, there's these things called LCP and NCP. So LCP uh, is I think your link control protocol or something like that and it basically is going to build and establish that link right well then there's also NCP I think which is your network control protocol and what it's going to do is identify that upper layer protocol the layer 3 protocol that you want to encapsulate so in our in our case we'll be using IP right so NCP is gonna is it has a field that identifies IP so when when I encapsulate my IP packets into my frames, send them out over the link. When they get to the distant end, it pulls them up and says, oh, I'm supposed to take this data out, and according to NCP, I'm going to hand it back up to IP. Well, in HDLC, they never nailed down a standard implementation for using NCP. So basically what you got is... Uh, Cisco's version of HDLC is incompatible with uh, another vendor's uh, HDLC, and that vendor's uh, HDLC isn't compatible with another vendor's HDLC. Okay, so in my case, I have two Cisco routers. They use HDLC by default, but if I had another vendor's equipment, this wouldn't work. Okay, so enough about that. Let's kind of get into it. We'll do uh, uh, config T on my router A interface serial zero one because that's the uh, uh, port that I'm using, and we'll just do a no shut, okay? And show IP, or we'll do a show interface serial zero one. Now we are currently down down, okay? Because I haven't enabled it on the other end, and my encapsulation is set to HDLC, okay? Now in most circumstances, show controllers. Uh, serial 0 slash 1. In most circumstances, this is what you're going to have. You're going to have a DTE device, right? So the router is typically DTE. In my case, I'm going to have uh, my other distant end is going to be DCE because I'm going back to back. But typically, your telco is going to be that DCE. All right. So you're not going to have to worry any about any kind of clocks. In my case, I have to specify a clock, so it says clocks are stopped. All right, so let's enable config T. Uh, I'll show you here. Show controllers S0. So I'm using an old school router here. I have a DCE, and it's just uh, seeing the type of cable that I have plugged into it, and I'm not specifying a clock right now. All right, so if I do a config T interface S zero we'll do a clock rate sixty four thousand so basically I just have a DS zero so sixty four K do a no shut and we'll give it a second here to come up the interface or how about a show interface interface S zero what we see here is now serial up up all right, so this tells us physically we're up because they're both enabled. And we're linking up over our uh, layer 2 protocol, right? Encapsulation HDLC. So they're both happy, right? And if I do a show CDP neighbor, I now see router A. Even though I haven't specified an IP address, I haven't specified a layer 3 protocol, I'm still able to see it because HDLC is a layer 2 protocol uh, and CDP will also work at layer 2. Okay, So let's go back in and actually specify an IP address so we can pass some traffic. 
So config t interface s0 IP address 192.168.0.1. All right. Config t interface serial 0 slash 1 IP address 192.168.0.2. And now we ping it. All right. So now we're up over layer three. Okay. So HDLC is doing what it's supposed to be doing. It, it just made it ultra simple uh, to connect our two locations over that uh, least line serial link. Okay. So moving on, we'll get into the realm of PPP. All right. So if I uh, go here on my router B encapsulation. And I've got PPP right there. All right, so I'll go PPP. All right. Now what we should see is the link should start having some issues here because we we're specifying PPP on one side and HDLC on the other. So show interface serial uh, zero slash one. All right. So right now it shows up up, but Let's see if it's actually working. Right now we're starting to get uh, nine unknown protocol drops. Okay. That's interesting. So how about 192.168.0.2? And we can't hit it. And notice we went down. So let's go ahead and fix it on this side. Wait for that to finalize. All right. So config T interface serial zero slash one encapsulation PPP all right so let's see state went to up so show try to ping one and two to one state dot zero dot one and now we can ping again so now uh, we've changed protocols from HDLC to PPP well, one of the cool things about PPP is it allows us uh, to specify a username and password. Okay, and what this is going to enable us to do is to ensure that uh, the distant end that we're connecting to is the distant end that we want to connect to. Okay, uh, you know things can happen. Uh, networks can get screwed up. Uh, telcos can mess up. Uh, people can change your network. Uh, whether you want them to or not, sometimes, you know, for whatever reason, you want to make sure that the distant end that you're connecting to is the distant end that you're supposed to be connecting to. So we can do that through PAP and CHAP. All right. The difference between PAP and CHAP is that PAP uh, is going to send basically everything uh, unencrypted, right? So it's just going to send a bunch of ASCII characters for your uh, your username and password. Pretty unsecure. Uh, also, it's only going to do it one time during that initial uh, negotiation. Uh, whereas CHAP is going to send it encrypted. Uh, basically, it's going to send hashes and uh, it's going to do it periodically. So it's called the challenge handshake, right? So periodically, I'm going to challenge the distant end uh, and they're going to have to respond to me. And if it doesn't match up correctly, I'm going to drop the line. Okay. So in order to set this up, we'll do a debug uh, PPP authentication, I think it is. Yeah. All right. So PPP authentication debugging is on. Let's come down here and specify PPP. And remember, we're still in interface configuration mode. We're going to do PPP authentication you got pap and chap in here okay so you can do this pap or chap pap and what this means is we're first going to try chap and if after a certain amount of time that fails out we'll we'll fall back to trying pap okay really chap is what you're going to want to stick with so i'm going to specify ppp authentication chap pap and then notice here I'm going to do you all to undebug all. 
Okay, authorization required. No authorization without authentication. And then it sent a challenge from router B. Now, so it used its user or its host name as the username, right? Unable to authenticate for peer, so the line protocol went down. So we couldn't authenticate, so it shut the interface down. And then it, it just kept trying. So it tried uh, to authenticate once more. So we'll do a uh, config t username. We'll call this router b because we want to authenticate this guy. So router b password Cisco. All right. Down here, we'll do a user name uh, router a password. Cisco. So I'm basically saying uh, when router A comes in, his password should match up with Cisco. And when router B comes in, his password should match up with Cisco. Okay. So I need to specify. So we'll do a deb do debug uh, PPP authentication. All right. So authentication is turned on. Now, I believe I already specified it here. I already specified PPP authentication, chap, pap. So I need to specify the same thing up here. So interface serial 0 slash 1. PPP authentication, um, chap, pap. All right. So what you see here is once I specified that, authorization required like we saw before, a challenge was sent for router A, a challenge was sent for router B. Okay? Using host name from unknown, using password from AAA, uh, response, response, and it passed. Okay? So everything passed. We're happy. We should be good to go. So do ping 192.168.0.1, and we're up and running. Okay? Now, so that uses the basically the host name of the router and then again you specify that as a username and password up here another way that you can do it though uh, you can do PPP how about an interface serial zero again PPP and you can use chap You could specify your own host name and your own password, okay? So if you didn't want it to automatically pick up router B uh, and then a password, you can specify your own host name and your own password, okay? Once you've done that, uh, what you really want to be looking for for the link is if you do a, uh, I'll do it up here since I can do a do show interface, Serial 0 slash 1. What we now see is that our encapsulation is PPP. LCP is open. So that link control protocol negotiated that connection. And it's working. So it's open. And then we also see for open IP and CDP. Okay. So that means that 1 LCP negotiated. And then down here, NCP negotiated. So NCP is allowing CDP packets through and IP packets through. Okay? So you always want to see once you bring up your PPP connection, the LCP is open and that these down here are also open, meaning NCP has, has uh, allowed or identified IP and CDP as being able to travel through this PPP connection. I know that's probably a crappy way of explaining it, but that's how I kind of understand it in my mind. So the basic takeaway is PPP is going to allow us to uh, specify username and passwords for this connection, making it a little bit more secure. Uh, CHAP is preferred over PAP. Uh, by default, it's going to use the host name as the username. And you need to make sure the passwords 
kind of match between the two. Okay, so I, I specified uh, router B on this side with password uh, C, uh, Cisco. And then down here, I specified router A with password Cisco. Now, personally, I prefer actually specifying PPP, CHAP, host name. Uh, so PPP, CHAP, host name, and you can put your own. So, I mean, I might still call it router B, but I like, I don't know, for some reason, for me, uh, I don't like guessing, okay, it's going to use a host name, but where where did it get that password? I, I'd rather just specify it in here myself. Uh, so password, I can specify zero because at this point it's unencrypted, but then I could come back through with service password encryption and put it at Cisco. So we should still work this way because uh, I've already specified that username and password up here so that the connection should stay uh, up and running, do ping 192.168.0.1. But I personally just like knowing it's going to use this username and password. It's going to use this password. Uh, somehow the other way of not specifying it just seems magical to me. And so I tend to not use it. But most of my links are also over Ethernet, not over leased lines uh, uh, using serial. So... It's not like I run into this uh, every day. But uh, that's pretty much it. HDLC is default, but it's specific to each vendor. PPP is more universal. There's a little bit more work uh, to get it running because you'll want to specify that username. Uh, but you can do some other things. PPP also allows you to do compression, um, things of that sort. But uh, it's a little deeper than what uh, you get for the, the CCNA level. So let me know what you think. Uh, if I screwed some stuff up, also let me know because this is a learning experience for me as well. So uh, thanks for watching.